so exciting to hear all of uh, what God's doing in these different nations. And actually, we have someone here today who we're going to interview. His name is uh, Misha, so if you want to come on up. Misha is from Serbia. It's fantastic to have him with us. Um, yeah, so Morris and Rachel um, have spent quite a bit of time with Misha in Serbia and uh, getting to know him. So we thought it'd be great to, to hear what's going on in Serbia. Uh, and yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. So. Thank you. Uh, so just before I go, I really feel in my heart, I want to thank Maurice and Rachel for being such a good host, but also such a good mentor, raising disciples. And my life is changed personally because of what you do, guys. So I just want a big round of applause for them, please. They're doing amazing things around the world. So my name is Misha. I come from Serbia. I'm uh, 33 years old, um, married, one wife, two kids. And uh, uh, my dad is a pastor of the church, but I got to tell you a story of how we came to Christ because I really uh, believe that it's going to encourage you. So back in the 90s, uh, I come from ex-Yugoslavia, right? Serbia, Yugoslavia was back then a, a communist country. And my dad took a lot of pride of being a communist. He loved being a communist, hated God because it was going against everything that he believes. And back then, um, of course, he was married to my mom, had myself and my brother. My brother is four years older than me. And then one day they discovered that my brother has some growths here. So my, we were all communists back then. And uh, they took my brother to the doctors to see what, what's going on with his neck and with his limbs. And, you know, one thing led to another. And very soon we found ourselves as a family going to the capital in Belgrade in the Institute for a Mother and Child, doing all of the tests. It took us just two days to understand, and the doctors came out and said, you know, we are very sorry, but at the age of 10, your son has cancer. And, it, you know, he has metastasis. It just went all throughout his body. Uh, we can try different things, but you know what? Um, our advice to you as parents to just take the kid home. He's not going to live for more than two months. And it was a devastating news to, you know, I'm a father now and I can't imagine how my parents felt. Ah, sorry. They brought my brother home. The family started to fall apart. My mother started to speak to walls, started losing her mind. Uh, my father would see in his visions or whatever you call it would see how the funeral of my brother's going to look like and he said you know what my my son's going to die my wife is going crazy i have a gun and and, and the minute he dies i'm going to kill myself but he wouldn't tell this to nobody and then my brother would just lay on his bed he lost all of his hair he lost all of his weight he doesn't speak to anybody he's just losing all of the strength and just Little by little, we're just waiting for him to die. And at that time, the church was underground. It was going against the system. And there were two brothers who were half illiterate. You know, one of them could not even write or read, but full of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> they came, they knocked on our doors. And my father, when he saw them, was like, yeah, can I help you? And this is what they said to him. We know that you're a communist, and we know that you're obligated by the law to report us to the police. But we know that if you let us pray for your son, and these were not the pastors of the church, it was just regular members. They came and they said, if you let us pray for your son, we believe that our God can heal your son from cancer. He will resurrect him from the dead. So my dad looked at them and said, you know what? I don't care if anything's going to happen to me as a communist, but if your God can help my son, I'll do whatever it takes. So they came in. They went on their knees as my brother was laying in his bed. They went on their knees, laying hands on him, and started praying a very simple prayer. The minute they finished the prayer and they, start, and they said, amen, my brother started to feeling better. He was like, can I eat something? And he's, been, he's not been eating for, for weeks. He started eating again. He started drinking again. Energy started to come back to his body. You know, his hair started to come back. 
Two months passed by. He's not dead. He's a very living, very alive child. So my parents said, okay, we got to go back to Belgrade and do the tests again. So they went and do all of the tests again. And then the doctors come back. And he goes, I'm sorry, but the, the, the machines are broken. We have to do the tests again because there's something very strange going on. They go on and they do all of the tests again. And then th we, we have a word in Serbia. It's consilium. It's like when all of the most important doctors come. So all of the, imp the most important doctors from the all of the institute, they came together. They invite my parents to go into the office. And they say, okay, we have two sets of results. We have results from just two months ago, cancer everywhere in his body. And we have now these results. There is absolutely no cancer in your son's body. Amen. Amen. And they go, what have you done with the child? You know, what, what medicine, what, what have you done with him? And my parents said, and, and they asked this, do you go to church or believe in God or something like that? Which is a very dangerous question. And my, my dad is thinking like, if I say no, this God may just heal my son. But if I say yes, I might end in prison. So he goes, well, yeah, we believe, we started going to church. We believe that it was God who healed my son. And then the doctor said to him, a communist said to him, you know what? This is something that no man can do. Only God can do things like this. <laughs> Don't ever leave your God. And this is how we became Christian. And my dad is now a pastor of one of the largest Roma churches in Serbia. And God's doing amazing things through him. Wow, that is fantastic. That is so good to hear. What an amazing testimony. Um, please tell us about your building project. So we've heard a little bit, a few of us uh, have heard, but it'd be great to hear a bit more about that. What's going on? Oh, thank you. So God's been doing amazing things. Yeah, many miracles, especially among the Roma people. Miracles, dreams and visions of people coming at night and seeing Muslims, seeing Jesus in their dreams. And they're like, what's going on? Tell me about this guy who has wounds on his hands. And God's been doing amazing things. And uh, there was a great revival still happening, especially among the Muslims. God's doing amazing things among my people. And all these years, we've been renting a building from a Serbian community church, which, which has been a great blessing. But God gave us a land in the midst of the Roman community. And God just inspired us to start to dream that God wants to, to have a building. And please don't take me wrong, but... As beautiful as it is to have a building in which all of the people can come and worship on Sunday, this is not the main reason. We want to have a building so we can bring people in, we can train them, we could inspire them, and then send them back so they can make disciples and plant new churches as God is already doing it now. So it took us seven years to clean this land. It was a huge piece of land where everybody would throw their garbage. And it took us seven years to clean this land, fence it, we did the foundations of the wall. We did the foundations of the building. We did the walls. And now we are at the phase of fundraising so God will provide and we can have the roof on it. Once we have the roof, which costs about 70,000 euros, once we have the roof, we already have people who would give toward the final phase and, and do the, all of the interior. So we are just at the phase of believing for God's provision that we will have those 70,000 euros for our roof and then we can have our own church building, our own community center for people to come in, be trained, and then sent so they can plant more churches. So please be praying about that, that God provides. And again, He is God of all richness, and God is going to finish what He has started. Amen. Fantastic. Fantastic. Guys, I'd love us if we could quickly stand and pray for Misha and all that's going on in Serbia. Lord, we just thank you so much for the nation of Serbia, Lord. We thank you for the people that are serving your name in that nation, Lord. And we just pray for Misha and, and the church there. We just pray that you strengthen them, you equip them, multiply them, Lord. Thank you for their vision of training up people and sending them out, Lord. Let it be, Lord. I pray that you continue multiplying what they're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Misha. Good to have you here.